One summer weekend morning, my 11-year-old daughter says to me, I know what we can do to remember this year of me being 11. We can walk around the lake. We live directly across the street from Geneva Lake, Wisconsin, and there's a path that runs completely around it. Parts of the path are very rough. I have been told that it takes about 12 hours of brisk walking just to get around it. I'm about to respond to my daughter with a litany of excuses. I have work to do. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. You'd never be able to walk that far. Your room's a mess and you have to clean it up first. But she's 11. Like most parents of a child that age, I know the days she will even want to spend with me are quickly diminishing. The next morning when the sun's forehead peeking over the trees, my daughter, myself, and a few neighbors begin our first steps on the path. I don't tell my neighbors what my daughter plans on doing. If she changes her mind, and I suspect she will, she won't feel like a quitter in their eyes. The morning walk is a pleasant one and it brings us into Williams Bay, but the next two hours take their toll on everyone. We have now walked a total of five hours with only a short break. The lone remaining neighbor has clearly had it and has called a friend to come and pick him up. I suggest to my daughter that we take the ride home too. No, she says definitely. I can do it. I know I can. Why, are you getting tired? I can make it, I assure her. But let me explain a few things. We have only walked about five hours to get to Fontana, which is another town on Geneva Lake. To make it the rest of the way is going to take anywhere from seven to nine more hours. The next town we reach will be ours. From here on in, there is no way we'll be able to call for a ride. At that time, there were no cell phones. She says it again. I can do it. Minutes later, we are walking beneath some weeping willows with branches so thick that only a few drops of sunlight can trickle through. You know, I say to her, you and I, just the two of us, will probably never walk this long together again. She says, cool. I agree, cool. Later, a friend of mine who has older daughters corrects me. When you walk her down the aisle, that will be your longest walk together. For the next couple of hours, the conversation is constant, but the passing miles slowly extinguish our words. She is really starting to tire, and I wonder how we're going to get home. A particularly long stretch of silence grows up between us. Tired, I ask? A little, she says as she picks up a stripped branch and begins using it as a walking stick. But I never want to forget this day, so my memory's taking notes. As a fading sunlight settles on the earth, we manage to accidentally walk into a small swamp which engulfs our feet in mud. She laughs. A few minutes later, it is completely dark. We are walking along a highway that skirts the lake for about a block. A full moon and clear night look down on us. We are about to enter the final and toughest part of the walk at the other end of these few miles of slippery hills lays the beginning of our town, Lake Geneva. At that point, we'll only be a few blocks from home. We step off the highway and onto the base of the first hill. Stay right behind me, I tell her. And she does. It's a slugfest. Tree branches throw uppercuts, quick jabs and roundhouse curves. Bushes fire low punches and tree stumps try to knock us down. A short lone fence post catches me right above the knee and sends me reeling but I stay on my feet. My daughter laughs again. There are moments when the fight is at a standstill, but slowly, inevitably, we move forward. We have just crossed up a half-eaten stairway, crawling with all our might that was hidden in the side of a hill when we feel something strange under our feet, grass. We look up and realize that we are on someone's front lawn. We're in Lake Geneva. She is too excited to sleep, so we sit on the front porch, swing, looking out at the black water of the lake. I'm afraid that she'll really be hurting in the morning, but in fact, she will pop out of bed while it will be three days before I'm walking normally again. My daughter looks up at the clear sky. You know, Daddy, we started with the sun and ended with the moon. I reply, so we did. Fifty years from now, she says, if I ever do walk on the moon, I'll probably be just part of a tour group. But not many people can say they walked from the sun to the moon. I reply, no, not many.